Hey everybody, John and Be Good here. All right, once again today it is uh, Tuesday, no, Wednesday. Wednesday, August 7, 2019. Our local time is 529. Temperature here is 73 degrees. Greetings from Marathon City, Wisconsin. We are loaded with 37,000 pounds of cheese. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go check our load scale. Hey, driver. All right, our load is almost way to the back. All the way to the back, in fact, uh, Probably right about here. My tandem is slid almost all the way to the front. Now a lot of people, a lot of you asked, what is the purpose of sliding the tandems backward and forward? Well, the more the tire of the tandems and, or tires are in the middle of the trailer, it's easy to conceive in your mind the more weight it's going to apply to the tandems, right? Now first rule is we can only grow at 80,000 pounds. So 34 on the trailer drive, uh, trailer axles, 34 on the drive, and 12 on the st uh, steer. That totals of 80,000 pounds. If you go 31, 35,000 pounds, then you're over. Now, if you're over right now, that means you have to slide the tandems backwards to lessen the weight. Because if you put this, as I said, the further you put in, the more weight it goes, right? Because think of it this way. If the tandems were slid all the way to the back, there are less weight. More of the weight is hanging to the front, like this. But the more your trailer is on the middle, 100% of the weight is now on the trailer tandems. So it depends. It all depends on what the load is, how much the weight distribution they have. For example, the more weight that they put in in the front, that the heavier is going to be in the front to alleviate, to take off the weight in the drives, the more you slide the tandems to the front, to the forward. Right? Right. What if they didn't load it properly and they put all the light stuff on the front more heavy on the back so now you have to slide the tandems backwards now here's a catch you can only go so much then you start breaking the the bridge law you get that you can't drive around with your tandem slid all the way to the back you'll be in violation of a bridge law and every state is different so for now on this load let's check our weight we are at one two three on the third hole and we are right there at 31,000 pounds at the most maybe 32 we're just gonna leave it the way it is because we're not over 34,000 pounds. So, one way to, one way to double check is now to check for the load scale on the drives. There's a load scale on the drives on the truck. 
Ah, the engine died. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna press this. Uh, let's start the engine first. There you go. Okay, we're gonna press this. Vehicle information. I gotta try to hold this. Vehicle information, press this. And then scroll. Scroll, 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 scroll. All right, right there is 49. I don't know exactly what 49 stands for, but as long as that's not on over 56, that means we're under 34,000 on our drives. So since we're at 49, Conceivably, we're somewhere around, yeah, oh, uh, 30,000 maybe. So, the reason I'm doing this is I don't want to put any, I don't want to put any weight on, you know, uneven weight. I really should find a, uh, a level ground. Let's see if we can't use this manhole as a chalk. Nope. It's important that you got to be on level ground and on neutral to get somewhat of a accurate reading. Now this is not as accurate as a cat scale but we're kind of rolling a little bit but uh, that should give us a close estimate to our weight. Alright so we're good to go. All right, we are delivering to. Let's get out of this here for a second. We are delivering to. Americold. I'm not really sure where this is delivering to, but we're just going to use Americold in Fort Worth, Texas. Ah, I got it. I got it. All right, so what else am I doing here? I'll be right back. I gotta, I gotta call the broker and let him know that I am loaded. So I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, we are good to go. I think we're delivering to Haslett, Texas or Fort Worth, Texas. Somewhere around there. Maybe Haslett is in Fort Worth. Um, but yeah, local time is uh, 546. Temperature is 73 degrees. It is 1,173 miles from here to 
Haslett, Texas. Delivery schedule is Friday. I was going to go get a cat scale, but nah. I'm going to brave it. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Sometimes it's nice to have a traffic light. <laughs> So, our route today will take us to 29 East, to uh, 51 and 39 South, to 90 East, 94 East, down to back to 39 South, all the way to Bloomington, Normal, Illinois. And then from there we're going to pick up Interstate 55 South towards uh, St. Louis, Missouri, and then uh, Highway 44 or Interstate 44 West, all the way down to Big Cabin, Oklahoma, McAllister, Oklahoma, Pryor, Oklahoma, not necessarily in that uh, order. And I guess I am to. I don't know the. I don't know the pre-plan from Texas back East Coast, but I am delivering to Oconomowoc, Wisconsin, for Tuesday next week again. And there's a big possibility. There's a big possibility that the Commander-in-Chief is going with me on Tuesday for one week. So more than likely what's going to happen is we're probably going to go to Texas. Then go back east coast, 
somehow lead the truck in the yard and then rent the car from the yard and go home to the house and then uh, that's when our two-week vacation starts actually my my wife is off until September 2nd so I'm gonna try to ask the boss if I can be off as hell two and a half weeks or three weeks until almost the same time where my wife goes back to work now whether uh, I don't know when the boss will let me go, you know, go back to work or need me to go back to work, but definitely I need to be home. It's already been set up where I need to be home August 20th. And I guess we're gonna go to Washington Island, Wisconsin on August 24th. Yep. I guess we're going to stay there for the night. And then, I don't know why, but she really wants to go to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So either we go to from Sheboygan after Washington Island we go to, you know, we go home and then from Sheboygan to Philadelphia up to New York City go to Statue of Liberty and then probably go to Niagara Falls up to Toronto, Canada up to Quebec And then uh, go back down home. So those are the plans. Now whether that's gonna materialize or not, I don't know. You know, we, we notice that in this family, every time we plan something, something always comes up. Something always comes up, so I don't know. We'll see. Oh, what else is going on? I think that really is it. We'll catch you guys later. That's all I've got for the moment. Thanks for watching, everyone. Peace. All right, once again, welcome back to Wausau, Wisconsin. By the way, somebody on the previous video, uh, car shopping video, somebody said, buy American cars. Isn't Toyota made in America? From what I understand, I think Toyota has the number one highest percentage of product made in the United States. Except for the engine. I think the engines on Toyotas are made in Japan. But everything else, body, uh, parts, are made and assembled here. In fact, from what I heard, even, even American cars like Ford, GM, Chevy, some of them are made in different countries. 
and certainly most of their products are made outside of the United States so I don't know uh, well you'll have to do your research on which of the car makers or car you know car mates to brand that is more made in the United States just because it's a Toyota it doesn't mean that it's not an American made car I could be wrong I could be wrong but that's from what I heard on the uh, on, on YouTube anyway and other people And I was, I was, you know, I was reluctant to buy Toyotas because made in America kind of a thing, issues. But as I said, most people that I think I, I thought or talked to, they agree that, uh, you know, for example, Toyota Tacomas are, are Tundras are made in Texas, isn't it? Are assembled in Texas. I just read a comment earlier that said he was driving a Ford and the part broke down and had to get the part and had to wait for three weeks because it came from Pakistan or whatever country country that was. So who knows? One more thing that I, I uh, kind of learned today was, you know, my wife and I we were gonna we were gonna do this shopping around, buy the car in Green Bay or in. Some people say the cheapest place to buy Toyota cars in Wisconsin is in Brookfield, Wisconsin. And I thought, that could be true, but then again, that doesn't do any, any good for the Sheboygan County. If you buy locally, all the taxes goes to your own city. Why buy it? give it to somebody else I guess it's always good to buy locally right that way all the taxes will benefit your own community of course within reason but one of the biggest point was we have established over I don't know, 20 years of customer loyalty at our dealership in Sheboygan. That's got to count for something, so. There's that. We are now on Interstate 39 and Highway 51, uh, going south, and this is uh, Schofield, Wisconsin. By the way, I'd like to say hello and greetings to Devon Sanga. I think Devon is from California. That's all I got. Later. Peace. Oh dear. Oh dear. Here comes the rain again. Oh dear. I think it's mixed with hail. 62 degrees right now. I have the uh, 
uh, wiper blade on automatic. a truck wash if you can get it for free. That big thump thump, that's hail. We're headed south and the, uh, the storm is headed east. out of it. See the wiper blade is going fast or slow and or slow because it's set on automatic. Quick, find an off-ramp, park, get your soap, and a bucket of uh, bucket of soap and some sponge, and go outside, wash your truck, soap it up, and let the rain rinse it off. Ha ha ha! I've actually seen that on a truck stop one day. Now that's what you call dedication, right? During, uh, you know, when it's raining hard, take your bucket and bucket of soap. Yeah, we're almost out of it now. All right, well, that was fun. Peace. There you are. Well, it's almost getting brighter. Uh, this four-wheeler is going to speed up on us. Local time is 6.16. We are in Portage County, Wisconsin. Lake Dubai. Lake Dubai. <laughs> B A Y is pronounced by in Bisaya. Later. Peace. Hey, everybody. Uh, just reminded about a YouTube video that I saw today and it really 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 made me think really hard it's about the controversy of voting ID laws that most Democrats or I don't know Democrats or let's just say that on the other side of the aisle are against the voter ID law because it's racist. <laughs> oh boy. Alright, so a guy goes to a university 
a very, very liberal university and ask people, young college people, what they thought about voter ID laws. And each and every single one of them said, yeah, it's racist because uh, they, they don't have access to the voter, uh, they don't have access to ID places. Some say, some even please, some even say that uh, that black people don't have access to the internet, or some people may not qualify for voting because they have a criminal record. Some say, well, it's racist because black people are poor and they can't afford you know, to get IDs, or to get there, or how to get IDs. And as I was listening to this, and I thought, really? <laughs> wow, people think so low of black people that are African American people. And again, each of these college grad, uh, college student, meant well. I mean, they, they really thought they were, you know, they were, uh, they were right on the ball of being compassionate. <laughs> they didn't, they didn't mean anything by racist. You know, they, they were not being racist about the, their answers. But then again, listening to them, <laughs> you can't, uh, you can't, uh, uh, you can't avoid to think what <laughs> so anyway that this interviewer goes to New York City and asks people do you have ID so yeah I got ID is this do your friends and family have IDs and he goes, yeah everybody here has IDs do you uh, ask? Do you have access to the internet? Yeah, everybody here has, you know, internet. Most of them had unlimited data. Do you know where the ID uh, office place is? Yeah. Do you know how to get there? And they're beginning to get annoyed with all these stupid questions. And they finally, he finally asked, uh, he finally told them, I says, because out in the West Coast or in some cities, people don't think <laughs> that American, African American don't know how to get IDs or can't get one or can't afford one. And, and they said, that's really ignorant. <laughs> that's really ignorant for them to think that way. And it, there's no other way to label it. That's being racist. So I don't know. I, I, for the life of me, I can't understand why the other party is against voter ID. I, I really just, for the life of me, I, I just really don't understand that. Really at all. I don't know. You know, they're always so scared about Russian uh, interfering with our elections. And yet, locally, there are people here that are defrauding our voting system. Social media giants that are uh, silencing one party in favor of the other. I think that's more believable than Russia itself mingling in our elections and, or politicians, even dead people <laughs> voting. 
there's a lot more going on here to be worried about than Russia. I don't know. It's just, but then again, as I said, for the life of me, I, I don't understand why people are against voter ID laws. I really don't understand that. But anyway, um, I just saw that on the video and I, and I was just laughing the whole time in unbelief of why people can think that certain people can't afford to get IDs, don't know how to get IDs, or because they all have criminal records. Well, if you have a criminal record, it is the law that you can't vote. I know someone that uh, that can't vote because they did something in their younger days. They got convicted of a felony. And that was like, what, 40 years ago or 30 years ago. Born and raised here in the United States, they can't vote because they committed a crime when they were teenagers. Yeah, anyway. That's my two cents anyway, so peace.